does does night two get a cold open too? Four twenty DNA. If it's in you. should be on you. Holden Rhodes Coffee. Always fresh, never tired. Coffee with personality. Check out www.holdenroadscoffee.com. Hello friends, welcome back to Me and the Boys Wrestling. My name is James Owen Brown. This is Eve of Challengers 2, night number 2. All the rest of the titles are up for grabs. I know you've been waiting because the last episode left you in mad suspense. Like all the titles are going to be on the line, but only two of them on, on this half. But there was business that we needed to take care of. I think I'm just going to fire this up, not waste any time. Firing it up now future James inevitably I'll have to turn this volume down because it's always too loud but while I do that and while we watch the uh, opening sequence that'll tell us incorrectly that we are in El Paso Texas I can tell you friends check out www.420dna.com because if it's in you it should be on you just like it's on me and while you're doing that, you can also sit down with a cup of Holden Rhodes Coffee. Check out HoldenRhodesCoffee.com. It's uh, it's delicious. My my favorite is the candy cane blend. But uh, every time I try a new flavor, I have a new favorite. So right off the bat here, we're going to see the mixed match title. Currently held by Dr. Volcano and Mad Moxie. Now we saw De Block and Diavolo go through a hellacious, rigorous tournament, make it all the way to the end, and earn themselves a shot at this coveted, coveted title. Dr. Volcano letting him know early. Now he's going to the top. Going to that high rent district. See if he can capitalize. He decides better of it. <laughs> the block picks a man up, throws a man down, but onto that turnbuckle for a snake eyes. Now he's going to stand this man back up, pick him up for a backbreaker, pick him up again for a backbreaker. Pick a man up, throw a man down. Nothing fancy about the strategy of one, the block. If the block were here, he would tell you to check out sharetheshock.ca for all of your, uh, for everything, really. Everything you could want. You want to keep up with the latest from the soon-to-be greatest? That's where you need to go. Check out this man's podcast. I don't want to screw it up. Uh, what the dates are and what goes when but I believe Candid Conversations Saturdays at 12 and uh, there is another one that happens on Wednesdays but the title is eluding me right now maybe I've got it backwards go to sharetheshock.ca that's where you'll find all the information and you can also find out about uh, the big New Year's Eve stream that the, the block has on tap He's got uh, either videos or live performances set up from acts from all around the world, uh, including myself. I'm submitting a video because I don't trust myself to perform live New Year's Eve after I've had a couple of wobbly pops. <laughs> That's not true. I'll perform. But I will be there. I will be part of that event in some capacity. What are your New Year's plans, friends? You got big plans? You going out? You gonna stay in? Are you uh, maybe afraid to uh, become ill due to that pandemic that we're not that far removed from? Maybe that factors into your plans, I don't know. 
Either way, though, we're going to put 2022 to bed. As Dr. Volcano eats the stairs, and the block's going to come back in. We'll see. Maybe he wants to make a tag. Or maybe he just wants to stand there. Hang oh, he's trying to get him counted out. Come on, man. Counts at nine already, but Dr. Volcano just squeaks in. Pick a man up, throw a man down. Nothing that fancy about the style of Dr. Volcano either. Picks the man up from the ground and hits a running power slam. I hope your Christmas was good, friends. Mine was excellent. I got a, uh, I got a ukulele that's matte black. It looks like a sports car. It's like the sports car of ukuleles. So now I have to learn how to play the ukulele. I know I used to be able to do it in like grade four. I remember being able to play like Stand By Me and like Rhythm of the Rain and stuff. So we'll see what happens. If I was able to do it then, surely I can do it now. Back and forth action here as now we get our first look at the ladies into the ring. And Dia hits a massive uh, Shawn Michaels style flying elbow off the top rope, buries it into the heart of Mad Moxie. Now she's going to go after a leg. Which is smart strategy because how are you going to throw out a vicious and violent kick if uh, your legs are all banged up? Now in our first attempt at this episode, what is DeBlock doing? He's just going up and down. As Dia's got an arm bar locked in on Mad Moxie. We talked about uh, in the first round how the, uh, the, when the partner comes in to break up the count and what the, what the situation is or the algorithm, because it seems like the, the men are under no circumstances allowed to strike the women. So not even in a scenario where they're coming in to break up a pin and they, you know, they hit the double ax handle onto the partner and it breaks up the pin. But it seems like as soon as the referee sees them enter the ring, the referee is focused on that and it breaks up the pin. So that's a neat wrinkle, and it looks like for the ladies, the ladies can just come in and smack the men. But uh, we'll keep an eye on that here as the situation progresses. Dr. Volcano going for a pin. This was bound to be a war. We got all kinds of talent in that ring. Dr. Volcano and the block, no strangers to each other. Dr. Volcano kind of representing that uh, kind of a wild card misfit toys vibe from uh, this little faction that popped up out of nowhere of Dr. Volcano, Mad Moxie, Elviscera, and the, uh, the realistic looking Mario and Luigi. Now Elviscera and that Mario and Luigi, of course, from the same stable, came up together, trained together, which basically means I got them from the same user creator, Alan They Check out, uh, check him out. I gotta remember his actual tag so I can send you there proper to look at some of his creations, because uh, they were all pretty good. And while I was there collecting Alvista, I grabbed those Mario Brothers as well. So. So it depends what you're looking for in a Mario, but I do like that gritty, realistic look of those Mario Brothers versus the cartoony kind of look. Now, after last episode, the uh, the cartoony Mario Brothers didn't fare so well, and in the chat, DMP said he wants to have Mario fight Luigi, and the loser is going to be kicked out of the Hellfire Club. So we'll see what happens. We'll do that on the next uh, the next episode of... Po oh my god, Dr. Volcano hits the poison mist, but the block no-sells it. He must have missed the mist. Uh, yeah, we'll settle that on the next episode of Pop Culture Punch-Out, and we'll see. Which is, of course, going to leave DMP with no tag team. He's going to have to create something new, which, which really won't be hard on that roster. You could put a couple of those pop culture guys together and get them in the mix. DMP, of course, traded away Crooked Control to me for Sarah Bailey. We'll have to get uh, 
in the new year we're gonna have to get some ladies into the action each faction now has uh, two or three and I believe some even have four ladies so we're gonna have to start mixing it up in the meantime to block going to work on dr. volcano showing off that strength with the deadlift all the way from the mat all the way up over his head that man's got to be seven eight feet in the air uh oh the block's got something in mind can dr. V make it to the corner he cannot the end of the block a lot of guys using the end of days right here if you're not happy with the end of days you let me know and I'll change that up the block doing a little uh, little pose down here right in front of mad moxie looks like the block's been bloodied running around a little frantic there this is our first match here of eve of challengers two night two and i believe that every match we're going to see tonight is a title match so we've uh, we've quietly accumulated quite the list of of titles we're going to find out who is the first ever pop culture punch out champion yeah see the ladies have to actually come all the way over and physically smack a man it looks like but the men just have to kind of hop in the ring oh the choke bottom from dr volcano crushing the larynx of the block dia comes in to break up the pin oh look at that she was going to go after Mad Moxie there. <coughs> Dr. Volcano with a vicious spine buster. And then he's going to tag himself out of there because uh, he's not doing that good. Now we'll see Moxie lock up with Dia. Catches her with a hip toss. <coughs> and uh, going to drag her by the hair over to the corner. No? Yes? It's reversed. Moxie hits a flurry of elbows. Shakes the cobwebs and then just kind of smacks Dia to the ground. Goes for a pin. Only good for a one count. Now she's going to give her that hard noogie. And tag in her partner, Dr. Volcano. And husband, Dr. Volcano. The block's still down on the outside. I didn't realize he was just kind of on the floor over there. Dr. V going to throw this man back in. We're into the four-star territory here, friends. And these mixed matches are tricky because of the any situation where you've got someone actively trying to break up the pin. Leads to uh, longer matches. And uh, you, need a, you need a strategy. you got to wait until... Oh, my God. Mad Moxie came running over. But it looks like the block missed anyway. And he's going to take a German suplex. Dr. V going for a pin. You're not going to keep the block down off a suplex. Maybe the back kick, though. And then a high risk maneuver. He's urging the man to get up. I want you in a standing position, sir, so that I can hit you with a diving lariat, I guess. Dr. Volcano going to try and drag the block somewhere, but the block reverses. And hits a... Suplex. I had to try it. I had to try the block's move. Just to see how hard it is to uh, carry that note. Because I can't remember if that was in the last episode or if the epi it was in the episode that got lost. So either way, tip of the hat to you, sir. It's not easy. Dia going to go for a stomp on Mad Moxie, but that's just going to rile Moxie up. She throws a punch. It gets blocked. Dia hits her with a Bailey to belly suplex. And now looks like she's got something nasty of her own in mind. Oh, right back to that arm bar. Ask him. Ask him. 
Referee gonna lean in there close and ask, hey, do you give up? Do you, do you give up? Do you, give, you, you don't give up? Mad Moxie does not give up. Oh, wow. Vicious combination of shots from Dia, the, the, the youngster, the newcomer, the rookie, basically, here at Me and the Boys Wrestling. There she is, holding her own. A lot of skill put on display in that mixed match tournament. If you uh, didn't get a chance to check it out, check it out. I believe that counts as episode 7 or 8 for season 5. So it kind of got slotted in there as its own episode. So if the count is wrong, that's why. Or it could be because the count is wrong. So I will tally the total points for the overall event and put them at the start of the next uh, episode proper. I think next week we might uh, take a little break and go back to Pop Culture Punch-Out on Thursday at 7 o'clock. I like to go at 8, but 7, I don't want to compete against Thursday Night Football. So, uh, I know we do have some, uh, some football crossover here. And I like Thursday Night Football, so 7 o'clock. Dr. Volcano going to square back up with the block. And this uh, this match out of control. Neither team knows what to do exactly. To, uh, you got to kind of subdue the partner. That's the trick. But when you can't... Uh, if I was playing and it would put me in a mixed tag, what I would do is take control of the lady. Wait until I had a finisher. As soon as I had a finisher, what I would do is run and put an elbow or a shoulder into the partner and knock them off the apron, and then go try to hit the finisher and get your pin. Otherwise, they're just going to keep breaking up the pin, and uh, it gets out of control. But what a war we've got here, just a back and forth situation. Everybody's got a lot of, you see that gray in the power bar, That's uh, you're not getting that power back, That's that's gone. Mad Moxie now decides better of the high-risk move. Oh, an ops for the much simpler black mask kick right to the side of the head of Diavolo. But it's only good for a two. Mad Moxie with that insult to injury kind of maneuver. There, Dr. Volcano. <laughs> he must have been... Oh, another black mass right to the side of the head of Diavolo. Let's we'll see the, let's we'll see what kind of grit. Okay, the block's in there. Good ring awareness by the block to uh, break up that pinfall. Mad Moxie lets the crowd know, but you got to stay up. Oh my God, just walking the back of Diavolo. Just gonna go up to the top again. Let's see. Oh wow. Just a massive splash. More than halfway across the ring. Oh, double knees right in the gut. Where is my money? Mad Moxie wants to know, demands to know, where is the money? Back up to the top rope. Let's see what she's got in mind here. She's not going to go? Okay. Egging her on to get up. You get up. I want to hit you from a standing position. But she gets too far away. Mad Moxie thinks better. We just hit five-star territory. And there's another Bailey to belly suplex. From Diavolo. She's going to ring the arm. Oh. Really working on those arms. She wants to finish this match with that arm bar. It's a long two on Mad Moxie. Now she's going to tag the block back in, and we're going to get another look at the men. Uh oh. Oh, reversed. Block went for the end of the block, but it got reversed into a uh, almost a choke bottom. Only good for a two count, though. Because the referee was out of position. Jerk. Okay, Dr. Volcano going to try and 
pull off the face of the block, but Diaz gonna have some ring awareness and go drop kick the man. Dr. V setting something up. Poison mist and the knee to the temple that goes with the poison mist. He's going for a pin. But again, Dia right there. Barely good for a one count. That's how fast she was in there. Unreal. Pick a man up, throw a man down. Dr. Volcano says it's done, throws an imaginary toothpick and then immediately tags out. <laughs> Ladies back in. Looks like Mad Moxie was winding up for the black mask, but instead gets hit with a Northern Lights buster. Nasty looking move. Probably drives your own knee into your own forehead. Now Dia's got the chicken wing. The cross face chicken wing. She's gonna go for a pin. Ooh, looks like Dr. Volcano just distracted the referee just in the nick of time. Dia gonna go off the second rope and miss horribly. Drive her own knee into the canvas. As the block lays stunned on the outside, there's a snapmare. And then a kick to the back of the thigh. There's no way that feels good. Oh, a vicious slap, a chop, a kick, another kick. Looks like Dia's own version of Black Mass right there. She's gonna tag the block back in. Oh my God. End of the block. He's gonna go for a pin. Oh, wow. 2.75. Dr. Volcano kicks out. And that could have been the end of this match. The block punches the man to spin him around. Hits him with one German suplex. And then a ripcord clothesline. Turns Dr. Volcano inside out. And then breaks his arm. And then breaks his arm in one more place. Stands the man up. Dr. Volcano stunned and in a bad way right now. Not going to be feeling any better after the Alabama slam. Wow. The block looks possessed out there. Men came out on fire. Moxie just getting back to her feet on the outside. What are you going to count? Oh my god. Dr. Volcano had taken enough of a beating. He was stunned. And the block. Manages to hold him on the mat for three as Mad Moxie makes zero attempt whatsoever to uh, break up that pin. But you got to think of your career. And tonight, tonight, I will quantify and qualify the team of De Block and Diavolo were the better team. And they are going to walk away new mixed match tag team champions. We'll put another belt in the uh, in the, the stable of the new militia, the new age militia. The first title to change hands here on uh, Eve of Challengers. Now, last year, every title changed hands. So we're going to see. Of course, we didn't have the ladies title in the mix. We're going to see Danielle Smith take on Luna Vachon for the QLLW, the Quarantine League Ladies of Wrestling Championship. Uh, Danielle Smith representing Team Holden. Luna Vachon representing the Hellfire Club. Looney Tunes, as DMP affectionately refers to her. His Looney Tunes. And that's the kind of uh, that's the kind of character you're going to attract when you're a demented, maniacal psychopath. And there was something we've seen a bunch before: Danielle Smith with the knee to the face, and then the uh, that awful German suplex into a pin. Knee to the face, German suplex, the bridging German suplex, I guess. Oh. Watching her wrestle is like the reason people get upset when they watch Brock or Roman Reigns and like the move variety is, uh, it's low, you know, let's not, uh, take too much away because they're both crazy athletes and, uh, obviously really good at what they do, but like, you could count on one hand, you know, you know what you're going to see and that's good though because they're high impact moves, you know, 
And that's the kind of character to me Danielle Smith is. It's not the smartest to, you know, come on your podcast and be like, Brock Lesnar's a punk. Roman Reigns is a punk. When, uh, obviously they're not. I'm just saying, when you look at a guy like, a, you know, a Daniel Bryan or an AJ Styles or a Seth, the, uh, the catalog, the Rolodex of moves that you could see is, uh, is bigger. That's all. Luna Vachon was standing the initial barrage of two of that uh, that Danielle Smith finishing move, which we need a name for, I think. Maybe Holden can uh, ask Danielle Smith if she has a name for that, uh, that knee and then the bridging German suplex. Oh my god. Picks her up by the face and throws her halfway across the ring. She can't go for a pin, but... Uh, only good for a two count. Luna Vachon, a uh, second or third generation superstar. Oh my god. Danielle Smith, it's a springboard moonsault, but uh, it misses wild. It's going to give Luna Vachon a window here to put a knee in her face and uh, hit her with a monkey flip. Now she's going to hop out and look for an equalizer under the ring, which is uh, sometimes good strategy. What's oh, a table? Friends, this is likely a tables match. <laughs> but we shall see. Oh, wow. Luna Vachon having a little moment there. And that's going to cost her because Danielle Smith is going to kick her in the stomach and powerbomb her hard down onto that... Uh, concrete floor and then end off with a Samoan drop from a fireman's carry position <clears throat> she's gonna hop back into that ring we'll see if she sets the table up or just for now uses it as a weapon smashes Luna with it she's gonna stand there with the table and contemplate I don't know how the legs come down I guess they're not all easy Sets one table up. Now she's going to go out and look for a kendo stick. And she's going to smack Luna around with that kendo stick a little bit. Oh my god. She shattered the kendo stick on Luna, who basically no sold it. Gets up, clotheslines her down. Now she's going to try and get a weapon, but you're basically defenseless in that position. So she's going to get spun around and pop right, in the, right between the eyes. Danielle Smith throws her back in. One hops the the top rope. Let's see what she's got in mind here. Got her up. Oh, knee to the face. Oh my goodness. And there's the bridging German suplex. Now the referee was counting pins. So this wasn't a tables match. And Luna Vachon was dangerously close to being German suplexed and having her head hit the corner of that table, which would have just been awful. Nonetheless, Danielle Smith uh, continues to be absolutely dominant here at Me and the Boys Wrestling. The Quarantine League Ladies of Wrestling Championship. And uh, Danielle Smith is undefeated. Now that I think about it. All the way through that first tournament. All the way to, uh, to here. I want to say she uh, she dismantled Mad Moxie. It was pretty bad. And I think there was one other defense in there as well. I could be wrong. Maybe somebody from the pop culture arena. Maybe a Power Ranger. That feels right. I can't remember. Either way, there it is. And still, Danielle Smith, your QLLW champion. Up next, the Quarantine League Wrestling title is on the line as King Teeley tries to take it. From Brent, the founder. Rocking a 420 DNA hat. If it's in you, it should be on you, just like it's on me right now. Oh, wow. Looked like Brent was going for a DDT, but King Teeley reverses with a couple of stiff shots to the gut. And then a couple to the head. Teeley relentless, got the man's arm caught up in there. 
I'm gonna go for a pin, but uh, you're not gonna beat the man like that. He's a former champion, former quarantine league wrestling champion, former tag team champion, I believe with the exception of the 12K title. Brent has, uh, well, I'm the only heels title. Brent has held every title here at me and the boys wrestling. While I'm here, Brent hits that massive sidewalk slam onto King T. Lee, who still has yet to lose a tournament here in all the ice. You gotta believe they're gonna be on him come March when uh, March Mania rolls around the uh, Scott Hall Memorial Tournament. Sorry, the Razor's Edge Memorial Tournament. Which means we're uh, coming up on one year since the uh, the passing of Scott Hall. R.I.P. to one of the greats. And we'll keep him in mind, you know, as we go through Marcho Mania. Marcho Madness. The gigantic 64-person tournament. And I think uh, it's not going to get quite the same icing as we had last year because uh, that was a lot. I spent an entire like month coming home every day from work editing frantically to try and have the next video ready. So I think for the sake of uh, and it made it neat to go through the brackets like that like to see the whole first round but basically what's going to happen is we're going to see one tournament at a time and then we're going to put the eight tournament winners into a tournament to, to, to find a final winner. Otherwise, it's just way too much editing. And it, that I do get it. It is nice to see all of round one get completed and look on and forward to those matches, but that's okay. We'll figure it out. We'll do something cool initially. We'll get all 64 on like a, I don't know, a spreadsheet. Oh, wow. King Teely. Looking down on his opponent, and it has not gone well thus far for Brent. And there's a drop kick to the back. So we can look forward to that in the new year. Uh, season 6 is coming. I don't think this is going to be the end of Season 5. That was the uh, kind of the initial plan, but I feel like there's still a little bit of business left with some of these factions. There's the final cut, or the King's Cross. Can't remember which is which, but Brent finds himself in the ropes. And then he manages to pull a reversal, lands a couple of cutting elbows. And we'll see if he can uh, regain some momentum here in this match. Oh, wow. Nasty punch to the face. And then one suplex, followed by a ripcord lariat. Turns the man inside out. He's going to go for a pin. Thanks for watching, friends. If you're enjoying the content here, this uh, digital wrestling, this uh, extreme combat sports, uh, please like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, do all those social media things, leave a comment, you know, say something in the uh, in the chat. Post a funny gif to our uh, our Facebook group, Me and the Boys Wrestling. Check out the Only Heels Facebook group where we uh, incorrectly name wrestlers and we have a lot of fun in the process. And also by joining that group and uh, participating. There's that pump kick. That is nasty. Brent takes the head clean off King Teeley just like that. King Teeley was dominant for the better part of that match and Brent right at the end there. Puts the lights out with a vicious bicycle kick. Here's the King's Cross. Maybe that was the King's Cross. I don't know. Either way, there's the ripcord lariat, and that probably started to turn the tide. Brent bloodied in the process of defending 
And still, the QLW champion, Brent. Having a nice little run with that. A couple defenses now. Continuing to acquire points for Team 420 DNA. Now, here's the Million Dollar Championship. Danger Boy Dana Boyle is, uh, I believe, now has the record for the longest holder of the 12K title. And we'll see if that record stays intact as he defends against Honky Tonk Zippe, who uh, won a Royal Rumble maybe a, a month ago, maybe even six weeks ago. These two fellas used to play hockey together, and that's an even float over DDT. And Danger Boy Dana Boyle looking to end this match in a hurry. And that's kind of what we've seen. He doesn't uh, he doesn't waste time. He punches you right in the dick. Hits you with the float over, the even float over. And uh, pins you for three. And we'll see if that's any different here. That's it. That's it. That's all. I mean, you could make the argument that that even float over DDT is has become one of the most devastating moves here. And me and the boys wrestling over the last couple of months. Danger Boy Dana Boyle can put the lights out in no time flat. And uh, much to the chagrin of whoever is the captain of the Dangerous Goods team. Not bringing home any gold like that, Honky Tonk Zip, eh? And there he is, Danger Boy Dana Boyle with his upgrade for this season in full riot gear. With the Keith Flint mohawk and the Irish Ultimate Warrior face paint. Speaking of how the man's Irish, there was talk in the chat. Okay, here we go. Hold on, I'll come back to that. This is the only heels title on the line in a first blood eliminator. The Stroop versus Holden versus James versus DeBlock versus DMP versus Ross Bruce versus Elviscera versus Riggs. And we are off. This is a first blood eliminator. If you bleed, you are out. So don't bleed. There is a 10 minute time limit on this match. Just because you know how things get here at me and the boys wrestling. There's a chance that uh, nobody bleeds and everyone just uses submission moves and the match never ends. So I decided I would throw a time limit on this bad boy. This is the first ever First Blood Eliminator. And what better way to defend the only heels title. And uh, the characters in this are the um, the most... Uh, uh, they participate the most over the Only Hills Facebook group. So if you are in that group and you are not in this match, don't, uh, don't take it personally. I wanted to do the eight-man first Blood Eliminator. And uh, I could have put more than eight men in there, so... I had to make some judgment calls. Somebody's bloodied. That was DeBlock just bloodied Holden Rhodes with the end of DeBlock. Now Viscera was going for that big heartbreak hotel, but James reversed. As Ross Bruce hits a spine buster on uh, DMP. DMP we saw lose to the Stroop uh, last Thursday. On uh, night one of Eve of Challengers 2, which means the Stroop is going to take on Cody Harris for the Me and the Boys Championship in our main event tonight. And we'll see. We finally got that finish between DMP and the Stroop that we've been trying to get for uh, probably a month now. Exciting stuff. There we see Alviscera with a stalling, stalling, stalling suplex on the Stroop as DMP looks on. Kind of looked like he might have been having a chuckle to himself watching the Stroop up in the air. Here comes Big Alviscera. Got to be a favorite to win any match that he's in. We saw that interesting statistic last week about how Alviscera since showing up which was, I don't know, midway through the season, maybe a few episodes into the season. Undrafted, because uh, 
Well, because I never gave anybody an opportunity. They uh, be kind of became their own little faction, joined forces with Dr. Volcano and Mad Moxie, recruited the services of the realistic Mario and Luigi, and all of a sudden these guys are over here. But, uh, yeah, the interesting fact, Elviscera, I went back and counted his points. His rumble eliminations, his uh, elimination chamber eliminations, the man won a ladder match. 31 points on his own. So had somebody drafted him, that would have been a big deal. And now it's too late. So basically, uh, El Viscera, Dr. Volcano, Mad Moxie, and the two realistic Mario brothers are kind of uh, they're like three-minute warning. If anybody remembers and gets that reference, I think the block was just bloodied by the Stroop, and uh, he's out of this match. As DMP goes to the top rope, Oh, wow. What's that Hurricane Rana on Big Alviscera? Oh my god! <laughs> the majesty at which the man moves at that size is just incredible. A springboard moonsault. As we see Riggs and Ross Bruce mixing it up on the outside, James one punches the Stroop and then gets kicked in the head for doing that. Uh, so yeah, those guys in that team are just kind of like a uh, a point void almost. They're just kind of there to play spoiler and take your points away. So take that. Ah uh, yes, back to Canada versus the world was something that was brought up. So we're going to take everybody who's uh, not from Canada or not Canadian or even if you have an excuse like you have a dual citizenship and stuff. Basically, we have too many Canadians to really do it properly, so we're taking any excuse we can to uh, call somebody an American, like you're Canadian, but maybe you spend a lot of time in Buffalo. Like, that's good enough. <laughs> the Stroop just powerbombed James all the way down to the hard floor, and then, my God, one hops to the top rope. It's a springboard elbow drop. Well, tries to hit a springboard elbow drop all the way down to the floor, but he misses. James dumps him up and over as Elviscera and DMP still going toe to toe along with Riggs and Ross Bruce. Uh, so yeah, if you are not all the way Canadian, you let me know or say something in the chat and we'll, uh, we'll set something up, some kind of a skirmish or a tournament. And uh, a lot of guys want to see these skirmishes, the, uh, the four on four finisher skirmish. Which I think is going to be a popular thing just because it lets us get all sorts of guys in the ring without taking up too, too much time. So we'll get some of that going as well. Just a couple faction brawls and we'll uh, extend the season maybe, I don't know, maybe another month. Because it feels like, you know, everybody's starting to get their footing. I'm getting a better bead and being better able to... Uh, make sure each faction has equal representation and stuff like that. And so far, nobody's really complained, except for DMP, but he complains about everything. Because he is a demented, maniacal psychopath. Who wants to see his own team members fight each other. He does not... I don't think DMP cares about the points. I just DMP just wants a, a proper team of violent and vicious people. And I think... Uh, oh, wow. Elviscera just bloodied DMP, took him out of this match with a Dominator, which I'm surprised that move would make a man bleed. We're at the halfway mark of this match, as per the time limit, and Elviscera just nails Ross Bruce with a power bomb. And we are down to five. So yeah, that's a few of the things we got on tap for the new year. There was talk of uh, a ladies tag team championship. We can do that. I don't see why not. I don't think more titles hurt too, too much. Gives our team captains something to say, hey, I could, uh, I, maybe I could have a shot at that belt. <laughs> Absolutely, you can. Just participate. Just ask. If you want to fight somebody, let me know. I'll set it up. I try to keep track in the chat, but sometimes, like, 
you know, a match gets pitched and I don't do any recording or anything for a week or two and then when I set up the card I forget. So if there's something you really want to see, you uh, you stay on me. You let me know. If you want to cut a promo, you want me to plug something of yours, you got a website, you, know, you got a music video, you got an event, let me know. We can talk about it. Uh, DMP has an event. I want to say January 21st is the release of a cinepoem that he has created. And James just bloodied the Stroop. And uh, I'm very excited for for the world to see this, uh, this piece of artistic brilliance that he is about to unleash. Because it's great. Good piece. Good visuals. It's awesome. So, in January, and we'll talk about it more as, the, as we get closer. James is swinging with those Canadian hammers, but it doesn't look like he's connecting, or if he is, it's not getting the same animation, so he just kicks Riggs right in the back of the head. And we're down to four, with about three minutes left. Riggs, James, Elviscera, who just takes a choke bottom, and Ross Bruce, who is rolling around on his back, grabbing at his knee, which is never a good sign. <laughs> James going to use that uh, whirly bird maneuver, or the whirly word, if you're Mr. Mustache. So he does it different, along with the cleft collider. Mr. Mustache took down Gale in the rubber match in a, uh, a first blood situation. As Ross Bruce showing off, he got Riggs caught in that caber toss maneuver. Kind of a stalling suplex, and you show off by doing a, like a squat in the middle. And there you go. There's how the animation looks when it connects. James clobbers Elviscera with the Canadian hammer. As we're down to two and a half minutes. We're into four-star territory. Not bad. Now this are going to roll out of here stunned as James is going to introduce, oh wow, interrupt Ross Bruce with the poison mist right in the eyes. And then clobber him with a Canadian hammer. While Riggs just kind of takes a breather up on the top rope. James hits the stomp right in the guts of Ross Bruce, who is doing a ridiculous roll away. And Riggs went for a splash, but missed. Now, this is still down outside. Oh, wow. The twisting brain buster. James goes to work on Ross Bruce with a series of kicks. And then it's reversed. Ross Bruce picks the man up, hits him again with that spine buster. I feel like I got hit with that earlier. Maybe I'm wrong. And again, there it is. We're down to a minute and a half left here. Elviscera going to hit a German suplex on Ross Bruce, and then I would imagine hit him with that ripcord clothesline as we're down to a minute 15. Elviscera got something in mind here for the Scotsman. Wow. Hits the Heartbreak Hotel, bloodies the man, takes him out with one minute to go here. James hits a springboard moonsault off the second rope. Look at him go. Now he's got a plan in mind for Elviscera. Let's see if it is a Canadian hammer, but he missed. Somehow still stunned Elviscera. And there he goes off the second rope again with a clubbing blow and then another moonsault onto the big man. And we are down to three with 40 seconds left in this match. A choke bottom for Riggs. And James got these two fellas out and down. Breaks the man's arm. 30 seconds to go here. James can taste that only heels title. It's a springboard again. Onto Riggs. 25 seconds left and another springboard. Elviscera stirs. Riggs is down. James is feeding him the boots. And here comes big Elviscera. These two going to mix it up. 15 seconds left. And there's the whirly bird. That's not going to make a man bleed. We're down to 10 seconds here. Oh, Riggs hits a big, nasty move. Now Riggs standing tall. Both of these fellas stun. Two, one. 
in this match going to be ruled a draw but what we're going to do is put Alviscera, Riggs and James in a triple threat first blood match on the next episode of me and the boys wrestling we are going to get a finish for that match my apologies friends but uh they couldn't get it done in 10 minutes we're going to need overtime this is the Pop Culture Punch-Out Elimination Chamber Championship match, and that is a mouthful to say. The Pop Culture Punch-Out characters have been going through hell over on Pop Culture Punch-Out. Six men, Hell in the Cell matches, rumbles, first blood matches, table matches, all to earn enough respect for me to go, hey, yeah, you're one of the six, you get a shot. So when we're talking MVPs, of pop culture punch out which has been a big discussion in the uh, the me and the boys war rooms we're trying to narrow it down just because you know it's fun to talk about so what are your criteria and for me some of the bigger criteria is appearing on me and the boys wrestling because that means you made enough of an impact on your show pop culture punch out to you know you want to rumble so you get a shot at the 12k title which means you have to be, oh my god, Peter Griffin is out of here. A Black Ranger Del Sol takes Peter Griffin out of this matchup. But if you earned a title shot on, on me and the boys wrestling proper, then uh, I put you in the argument. Black Ranger held a Money in the Bank boys catchel briefcase case satchel bag. Here comes Beetlejuice, he made a bit of an impact. He-Man uh, held the QLW title for a little bit, so he's got to be in the discussion. Elvisera has been here on a weekly basis, inserting his nose where it doesn't belong. And of course, last week we saw him win a, uh, a title opportunity to take on the winner of either Cody Harris or the Stroop. And an event coming soon. I was about to say he looks dominant, but he just took the Black Ranger Del Sol. And that put Peter Griffin out of this match in a hurry. But uh, not the same result for Elvisra. Look at the size of Ivan Drago. Just a monster in that one. Peter Juice going to pick up Elvisra and give him that forehead claw. Just going to pick a man up, throw a man down. As Ronald McDonald enters the fray, who, uh, oh, the referee horribly out of position as Beetlejuice has Elvisra down for like a nine count. And it's not going to matter. Pins the man for 12 and big Elvisra out of this match. And he was, uh, he was my favorite to win. And we're down to four. Ronald McDonald dumps the Black Power Ranger down onto that hard steel as Beetlejuice goes for a pin. Now Ronald McDonald, he's going to get him. Ivan Drago's out of here. Ronald McDonald hits a Ronald McDonald Del Sol. And Beetlejuice, and is that going to be enough? It's not. Ronald was brought up as a joke during the, uh, the live stream of Pop Culture Punch-Out, and we had a brief discussion about whether Ronald was worthy or not, and kind of laughed at him because he's no good as he goes for a pin. And uh, since then, like he must have re-watched the feed or something and didn't like what we had to say about him, because since then he's done nothing but win. Oh, wow. You're not going to win when you keep taking Black Ranger Del Sol's. 2.75 and Beetlejuice kind of. Let them fight. That's it. Wow. The Black Diamond Cutter. Wow. Ronald McDonald showing some grit here. Withstanding a barrage of finishers and attacks from the Black Ranger. Now Ronald going to get a chance to catch his breath as Beetlejuice and the Black Ranger go at it. Beetlejuice going for a pin right away. Wow. I wouldn't have been shocked if he got him there. You pick a man up by his... Oh, look at those little rabbit kicks. Nasty. Beetlejuice letting them know. Ronald comes back in. Oh! Ronald buries the knees into the face. 
And then hits the basement DDT. That's a nasty business. Going to go for a pin. But uh, it's not enough. Nobody's got any finishers left. Ronald hits a big DDT. Beetlejuice just kind of kicks him and then drops an elbow right into the heart of the fast food clown. Beetlejuice sets it up for a neck breaker but then spins around with a discus neck club. Oh, Ronald with a head scissors as the ranger looks on. Ronald gets taken down. Beetlejuice uh, doesn't like what the Black Ranger has to say. Punches him twice, hits him with a big boot, and then goes back to Ronald McDonald, who's ready, waiting, and again buries the knees right into the jaw. Beetlejuice with a springboard cross body block attempt, but it misses. And the Black Ranger going to do some damage of his own, and Beetlejuice hits a neck breaker. And at any point, each of these men has had a uh, turn in control. But right now, if you... Oh, wow, that's it for the Black Ranger. And right now, if you look at the power bars, you've got to put your money on Beetlejuice because uh, his power bar is stacked. Well, in comparison. Friends, thanks for watching with us. Please like, share, subscribe, leave a comment. All those social media things helps us get a boost in the algorithms, especially those shares. Those shares are massive, and I appreciate everybody who takes the time to share and watch and like. Just trying to tell some stories with wrestling, you know? Using the platform that I got to tell some stories. Wow. Speaking of stories, Ronald McDonald, after being slighted on the broadcast about three weeks ago, does nothing but win, 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 and has become the first ever pop culture punch out champion. And that's probably going to upset some of these characters. For example, Ivan Drago is not going to be happy. Ronald McDonald representing the Hellfire Club. DMP, he'll be happy. Making an impact. There he is, a bloodied Ronald McDonald hoisting up the pop culture championship. The first one to ever hoist it. Keep that in mind. That'll be a trivia question one day. And DMP's got to be happy with that. And that's part of his captaining technique, maybe. He's got these little subtle ways to kind of light a fire under a man. And that's exactly what he did. Showed up to do a little bit of commentary on the live broadcast uh, via comments, which you can do. You can comment, and a computer, a weird computer voice says the comment and butchers it. This is our main event for the night, friends. The Stroop going to take on Cody Harris for the Me and the Boys Championship. Let's go. Cody Harris comes out hot with a couple of kicks. With the Stroop going to reverse with a couple of elbows. Shake the cobwebs. Oh, wow. Nasty looking DDT. Kick right in the mush. Cody Harris reverses. <laughs> Just a couple of big fellas hitting hard kicks. Cody Harris up to that second rope. He's gonna fly halfway across the ring, hit a big splash. Oh, and the dreaded back kick. We've seen that end many a career here at Me and the Boys Wrestling, that vicious and awful back kick. Smashes the Stroop's face down into that canvas and now looks like Cody Harris going back to that high rent district. To drop a massive leg drop. That's a big leg. That's like a tree trunk coming across the chest. Referee get a count. But uh, it's too soon for that. Cody Harris knows that. But you got to try. Oh wow. Massive clothesline. Turns Stroop inside out. Uh oh. Cody Harris got the sharpshooter. And the Stroop could be in trouble here. 
Referee says, you want to you wanna give up, sir? Troop says, no. Powers his way out. And it hits a vicious flurry of shots. Wow, double knees right in the face. And then a little bit of disrespect there. Sitting cross-legged. Kicks the man to the gut. Uh-oh. Cody Harris is about to take the Stroop effect. Stroop out here trying to kill a man. Another one of the most devastating moves that me and the boys wrestling. Stroop goes for a pin, but Cody Harris. Gonna take more than one finisher to put Cody Harris down. Which probably means we shouldn't call it a finisher, I guess. There's a reverse head scissors. Or a reverse Hurricane Rana. You take Cody Harris off his feet, but he's going to bloody the Stroop with a DDT. And what's this? Oh my God, it's a Tommy. A Tommy's got the cash in the satchel bag. His purse, briefcase, attache case. He's cashing it in. The referee makes it official. And this is a triple threat match from here on out. Now, the Stroop is going to be beside himself as Cody Harris delivers a spine buster to a Tommy and then one for the Stroop. This is the second time now the Stroop has legitimately earned himself a title shot and had it interrupted by a man. The first time, of course, the Stroop earned a shot at DMP who uh, agreed to have a friendly competition. And uh, the match was interrupted once or twice, and then the third time, Cody Harris cashes in his Money in the Bank boys' satchel briefcase. And uh, it becomes a triple threat. And the Stroop, after, you know, coming dangerously close to winning that match on his own, ends up on the losing side. And Cody Harris walks out with that title. After we had made the comment, well, at least for the Hellfire Club, no matter who wins the match, you're still going to leave with the title. No, it wasn't the case. It was completely incorrect of me to say that. And now, here we go again. Wow. The Stroop. Going to hit the Stroop effect on Itami. There it is. And as he goes for a pin, you see Cody Harris, like a shark in the water, just waiting for him. So that he can break it up and ruin it. Picks the Stroop up, but the Stroop gets loose. Stroop with a kick. Yeah, he's going to pick up Cody Harris, show off some of that power, that guillotine off the top rope. And then the Stroop says, bring it on. I don't care. That title's mine. I don't care who's in the ring. Stroop pretends for the neck breaker and hits the clubbing forearm to the back of the neck then puts a Tommy in the corner a Tommy reverses hits a chop and if you're a Tommy I don't know I would have waited till the end of this match I think but let's see what happens Cody Harris letting the crowd know from the second rope Stroop is down and out in that corner and the Tommy is in control right now and he knows it look at him he's having a little dance little twist but the Stroop is up oh a Tommy knew turned around hit him with a drop quick drop kick right in the nose wow. Stroop blocks takes the man down kick to the gut and again the Stroop gonna hit the Stroop effect on a Tommy but again look at Cody Harris just waiting Stroop going to go for a pin to Cody Harris like a shark in the water. That ring awareness. Unbelievable. As Cody Harris glitches himself through the ropes to the outside somehow. And Stroop hits a snap suplex. Fully in control right now. Got both men down. But he, you just know now. You just know Cody Harris is ready, waiting. He's watching. Oh, wow. Tommy just being disrespectful in the corner as the Stroop rolls out of the ring. Cody Harris hits a spine buster. He's going to go for a pin. Is that going to be enough? 
Wow, that's going to do it as we shout out our house show viewer who showed up just in time to see Cody Harris pin Itami and hang on to his Me and the Boys championship. Shout out to that person for not spoiling the results. Much appreciated. <laughs> but there you have it again. And the Stroop is going to be livid with Itami. And uh, you know what? I... I, I try to tell the stories and you maintain some consistency and consistency states that Itami needs to fight the Stroop one-on-one -on -one and the winner of that will get a one-on-one -on -one shot at Cody Harris. And in the meantime, we have two vacant cash in the satchels. I will stop this, come back to me so that I can tell you friends, thank you so much for watching with me here today. Uh, I hope you have a happy and safe new year. December 30th, which is tomorrow, if you're watching on Thursday, uh, there'll be a poetry competition. You can watch it at www.caffeine.tv slash P-O-E-T-V is the link. I'll post the link somewhere else too. You'll, you'll find it. Send me a direct message if uh, you're interested in checking that out. Check out our sponsors, www.420dna.com because if it's in you, it should be on you just like it's on me right now. And HoldenRoadsCoffee.com. Always fresh, never tired coffee with personality. Check out ShareTheShock.ca and find out all the information about uh, DeBlock and all his adventures. And uh, all the information for his New Year's stream and show will be there. Please like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, check around on the channel. Check out some music. Check out my Bandcamp. There's a Christmas special on there. P-O-E-Z dot Bandcamp dot com. And uh, you'll find it. It's called The Ghosts of Christmas. And it is heart-wrenching and hilarious and disgusting. It's all of those things. So check it out. My friends, have a safe and happy new year. We will see you in 2023 for more digital wrestling action. Cheers. Thank <laughs> you.